Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today let's talk about why it is so important to know how to give a ballpark estimate. <laughs> Okay, so in the past few weeks, our team has been streamlining our client acquisition process. So actually bringing clients in for new projects and trying to make it less, less bottlenecks than we had before. Usually the bottleneck in everything in the company is me. It's me saying, ooh, I don't know, we need to decide on that and then not making the decision. So we're trying to streamline a lot of these kind of things, right? So one of the things, so whenever we take on a new client, it always starts with giving them a ballpark estimate and ideally we do that on the first conversation on the phone. So if we have a, a give and take, so it's, it takes a little bit longer with an e if we doing by emails, but on a phone call they'll say, well they'll call up, they'll say, well, yeah, I have this app we need to do, it, it needs to do this, this, and this. I might ask a few questions like, does it need to be on Android or iPhone? It, you know, is it an app or a game? How will this, and we kind of work through it and have like a 10, 15 minute conversation. And I always try to end that off with a ballpark estimate so that they know whether or not they can afford it, whether or not it's within their budget. I never ask the budget. This is one of the things I just, I hate when people ask me my budget when I buy something. I always think, hey, how much will this cost, right? Expecting an answer and they say, well, that depends, what's your budget, right? And so we're trying to streamline that a bit more. Like a lot of the times we work with other developers. So we'll hire on certain developers for certain projects. So I'll, I'll go to them and say, hey, you, we, got this, we got this project in, I spoke with a guy, it all sounds really good, it needs to do this, this, and this. How much do you think that would cost you to do as a general ballpark estimate? And it's usually met with, so a lot of times it's met with a lot of questions. Like for experienced developers, they could tell me right away, they could say, I think it would cost between, I don't know, 4,000 and 6,000 or, or you know, 300 and 800, whatever, it depends on the size of the project and the scope or the, the task, whatever. So they could tell me. Inexperienced developers will not tell me anything. They will say, hmm, I don't know, how much do you think it should cost? Uh, how much do you think? So like, to give you an example, I get contacted on Skype all the time by developers, or Skype or uh, through Facebook message or whatever, say, hey Eric, I'm a developer, I could do this app for you, I could do a game, it's gonna be really cool, it's gonna be like 3D and everything like that, and I think, sure, that sounds pretty good. We could, you know, it'd be nice to have some, some new apps in our portfolio that, you know, that, we didn't have to work so hard on somebody else did it for us right so that my, my question is how much is it going to cost and that's when everything stops and go hmm i don't know how much is it worth to you right and uh, how much do you think it should cost all right and i know the fear i know what the fear is the fear is that you'll quote too low and feel like an idiot because you're working too hard or you'll quote too high and you'll lose the job right so this is why ballpark estimates need to be arranged they need to be and they, they need to be so a pro proper ballpark estimate should be based on what you told me and based on these assumptions it's going to be iphone and android it's going to use firebase as a back end it's going to do uh whatever this kind of authentication whatever based on these assumptions we think it will cost between this amount and this amount depending on the complexity if you want to go further we are going to finish with a with a proper uh, with a proper quote, a more detailed quote, but for now, we think it's going to be between, between this range and this range. Please let us know if you want to go forward because it, it could take like, it could take several hours to do a proper detailed quote with, with uh, workflows and, and mock-ups and all this kind of stuff, right? Which is what we always try to do before we start on a project. So the ballpark is key, right? So there's been a few cases in the past where we messed up because we didn't give a ballpark early. There was been a, like once I got this call, this was like back in the early days when I was so desperate for clients. Like I, I left my, my job and I, or left my contract and I was doing overpass full time on my own and the money started to dry up. And I was like, we need to get some more clients in, right? And I got a call like in early December and I, you know, and I talked to the guy and he said, we normally talk, deal with another app development or we normally deal with another development company, but I can't get in touch with them today for some reason. So I thought I'd Google and I found your company. You know, this is kind of what we're looking for. I was like, hey, yeah, fantastic, great. So I listened to everything he said. I go, okay, fantastic. I said, you know what? I think what we need to do is have a meeting to discuss this further, right? I didn't want to give him a quote. I didn't want to give him a ballpark estimate. I just said, let's have a meeting. Like, just give me a bunch of your time. Let's, yeah, and I was just dragging it all out. And he said, yeah, sure, okay, drop me an email or whatever, and he hung up. And I, all through the December, 
I kept emailing him and phoning, no response. That all through January, I kept emailing and phoning, no response. It was I was just I become a nuisance. I was like a lovesick teenager. Like, hey, have you seen? Did you check my last email? Did you see my last email? Everything. Finally. I sat down with my designer and we did a quote, like a full detailed quote, spent like half a day on it, right? More time than I should have done and send it off to him and I got a call within a few hours of sending that. And it wasn't, it wasn't because the quote was so good, it was because, because it had a number on it. Because he called back and saying, he said, I thought it was gonna cost a lot more than that. Right, which is, which is always, it's like a dagger to the heart when you give a quote and people say, I thought it'd be more than that. Said, God, I, I had more room to wiggle there. but. It was because he thought it was going to cost like fifty or sixty thousand, and it was, it was like five, and then like five or six. It was like the, the the ballpark range was really low, right? Because he didn't know. I, it wasn't even worth him returning my calls because at the end he just had this assumption that it was going to cost more, not really worth calling. And we have had other situations where I worked with developers, and we had people call up, and we didn't give a ballpark estimate, and we spent weeks just conversations back and forth, and finally when we hand over that that price gives some sort of indication of how much it's gonna cost. It's like, well, that's way too much. I can't afford it, right? So one of my rules is that I don't ask for the budget. I just hate doing that. So we always give a ballpark and that's an important skill to have. And you would be surprised at how difficult sometimes it is to get out of developers. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have this kind of problem? You know, my ideal situation is that we qualify, or that if somebody calls up and they want an app, we give them a ballpark early, so if it's way outside of their their budget, they know early on. We don't treat them like a you know like like a mark, like we're, we we can get the money out of them if we really try, and and we don't you know and we don't lead them along by making them have sit in lots and lots of meetings and and waste all of their time and our time uh, without doing that. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have this kind of problem? When you those of you who work with clients, do you have this kind of problem? How do you deal with the client acquisition. Do you do the ballpark estimate first and then the quote? Do you just do the quote? Is it a lot more informal than that? Or is it a lot more formal than that? I'd be really interested to know. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.